Hey, so I just finished reading Roger Scruton's An Intelligent Person's Guide to Philosophy. Uh, it's It came from a library. Uh, I guess they owned it before, and no one was able to take off the, the cover in here. It's fine, because it's got that hard, plasticky cover on it, which is cool. It protects the book more. Uh, now, Scruton's book does begin from first principles. Uh, he asks the question, why should we practice or study philosophy? Uh, and that's the first chapter of the book, is why? Why do we do this? Why should we do this? Um, however, he does make logical leaps a couple of times, and he overcomplicates a couple of things. Uh, for example, he, uh, in, in the history portion of things, he brings in Hegel and Kant and A.J. Iyer all together and tries to analyze why we should study history and uh, what forms of, of uh, histor historical study there are. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. It's still, it's a short chapter, but, you know, it doesn't need to be that complex. Uh, Scruton's book, Roger Scruton is a British conservative, um, and he is most famous for uh, a couple of lectures. May, there might have been a book uh, on the true, the good, and the beautiful. <clears throat> and... Uh, well, his his conceptualization of that is not presented in this book, which I was kind of hoping I would be able to see something along those lines. Um, it's interesting. He has a chapter on sex in here, and his view of sex is actually quite liberal, believe it or not. Uh, very, very interesting book. Uh, not the end-all be-all, though. Thank you for watching. Peace.